is to make people think they're hearing something they aren't, right? You're not trying to make people hear as if you had half the band in this AirPod and half the band in that AirPod. You're trying to make people feel like they're in a space, maybe the band is in front of them, maybe they're in the middle of the orchestra, maybe it's some space you've completely made up, whatever it is, and it's all based on psychoacoustics. Most audio effects are based on psychoacoustics. Psychoacoustics means I'm gonna trick you. So you need to understand how humans hear stuff. And the way humans hear stuff is through your ears. There you go. Everybody's head is a different shape. One of the most important parts of your head for hearing is called the pinna. It's the outer ear that directs sound into your ear canal so you can hear it. Everybody's pinna, totally different. But the way it works is the combination of the physical parts of your head and your pinna and your ear canal and then the eardrum and on the way in that paired with the auditory nerve going up, nerves, like thousands and thousands of them going up into your brain and your brain starting to process that sound is how you hear stuff. So uh, how many people have dogs? How many people when they get dogs that hear something weird and the dog goes, huh? Yes. The dog is locating because as you move your head, the difference between your left and right ears will change. The frequency response will change. This is all so that you didn't die. Try and keep in mind always that human evolution is all about not dying. Well, all evolution is about not dying. So that's why humans don't localize very much above their heads because it's not important. We weren't getting attacked by birds. Pterodactyls weren't around anymore. Velociraptors were coming. Everybody was coming at you from basically head height. So we're very, very good at localizing in front of us head height, and then we move our heads to localize anywhere else. Head-related transfer function is a ridiculously complicated mathematical and physical model of people's heads to say, if I could make it sound like something is coming from here, what would that sound like if they listened in headphones? How different would the signal be in this ear and that ear? So the easiest way, let's say something's coming directly at the left side of my head, goes straight into this ear canal. So I kind of get it full frequency into this ear canal. Fantastic. This ear, it, first of all, it's late, right? It's a longer way for it to go. And it has to curve around my head. And high frequencies aren't very good at curving. So it's going to be much darker. It's going to be more low frequencies. Then you have the idea of what do you do if you know what it sounds like? Well, if you know what something sounds like, then you're really good at hearing distance because you lose high frequencies because they're more easily absorbed in air on their way there. Low frequencies go for a really long time as anybody who's ever lived next to anybody with a subwoofer knows. And so you have all these different ways, but the head-related transfer function is sort of the linchpin of localizing things. Then on top of that, you've got head tracking, which we'll come to in a minute. Those are the sort of the two things to say, I want something to sound wider than stereo while someone's just got headphones on. Those are the things you do. You will take a signal that normally if you're just panning it in a regular stereo mix would have a little bit more on the left or a little bit more on the right, whatever. And you start to do convolutions with it to say, I'm going to put it in the left speaker sounding like this, and I'm going to put it in the right speaker with less top end and a little bit later, and it'll sound like it's coming even further from the left. That's the head-related transfer function.